The Ethics of Nanotechnology. The purpose of this module is to introduce you to the issues of ethics as it relates to the work that you do. In this module, we will cover what is nanoethics, why does it matter, and how might you think about ethics in the context of your own work. So, what is nanoethics? Nanoethics is the consideration of the social and ethical issues and concerns related to nanotechnology specifically. Ethics has uses in other fields, but we use the term nanoethics to take ownership of it as an important consideration of science at the nanoscale. The advancement of nanotechnology has raised concerns about the societal and ethical implications of nanotechnology on humans, society, and the environment. As a result, the 21st Century Nanotechnology Research and Development Act was passed in 2003. It emphasizes the need to understand our science from social and ethical perspectives. Research that is funded through the National Nanotechnology Program must consider ethical and societal impacts. The information presented today is to help you meet this requirement. This information is important because being aware of the downstream or future implications of our work makes us ethical leaders. An ethical leader discusses business and research ethics or values with employees, sets an example of how to do things ethically, defines success not just by results but also how they are obtained, and when making decisions ask, what is the right thing to do? Regardless of whether you are an independent researcher or a manager of a large group of employees, you can lead. Now, let's pause for reflection and discuss what is nanoethics? The short answer is that nanoethics is the consideration of social and ethical issues that may result from nanotechnology research and development. Being an ethical leader is important in order to preserve the integrity and discovery of nanotechnology as well as protect society and the environment from potential negative impacts. Potential negative impacts can include severe environmental damage due to nanoparticles that don't break down in nature, lung inflammation, liver and heart problems from inhaled toxic air, and severe brain damage to fish exposed to contaminated water. For example, in Flint, Michigan, unethical decisions were made by several individuals that resulted in citywide water contamination from toxic levels of lead. It is important to consider how your decisions and the decisions of those around you can impact others immediately and in the future. Nanoethics also matter because ignoring the possibility of social and ethical implications is risky and can jeopardize future work. For example, concern that scientists are not considering human impacts can lead to decreased funding and increased regulation. Additionally, the discovery of negative human impacts, particularly if perceived as the result of the negligent pursuit of progress, can bring the science to a halt. Furthermore, the societal and ethical implications of our work should be considered in every stage of our research. Let's pause for another discussion. Have you known any ethical leaders? If so, what qualities did that person have? How did he or she lead? Next we cover, what does it mean to consider the societal and ethical implications? Dr. Leela Prasad, Faculty Director of the Duke Center for Civic Engagement introduces us to a concept she calls ethical doubt. According to Dr. Prasad, knowledge comes from experimentation and reflection marked by things like missteps, doubt, and correction. What results is a sense of fulfillment. In this way, doubt enables reflection and an awareness of alternative possibilities and explanations. In this module, we encourage you to explore your ethical doubt 
and to increase your reflection on alternative possibilities as we consider the societal and ethical promise and risk of the work we all do. So, what does it mean to consider the societal and ethical implications? As nanotechnology presents new opportunities for our future, we must also consider the potential risk and hazards that come along with it. Here we present a typology for thinking about ethical considerations in the context of science conducted at the nanoscale. We present the typology as four concentric circles. Each circle is a level at which we can consider our ethical responsibilities. The levels are individual, workplace, societal, and environmental. At the individual or personal level, we each are responsible for adhering to high standards of honesty and integrity in our profession and scholarship. An example of this includes promptly reporting all chemical exposures or suspected chemical exposures to the appropriate office. Furthermore, we are expected to meet training requirements related to the responsible conduct of research as required by sponsors and host institutions. This relates to personnel protective equipment, chemical handling and storage, and chemical waste disposal. We are also responsible for being familiar with the emerging research on the ethics and societal impacts of the work we do. This research can be accessed via the web in journals such as Nanoethics or in TED Talks like the one shown above. This research can help us stay informed about ethical issues and explore our personal ethics and ethical doubt. In the workplace, we are responsible for ensuring a safe working environment for those who come in contact with our research. This includes making sure the work environment is compliant with federal and state regulations, university policies and procedures associated with the research, and matters related to chemical and biological safety, security, and disposal. For example, we should supply safety equipment such as eye wash fountains, first aid kits, safety showers, multi-purpose fire extinguishers, and spill kits. Within a workplace, we can be an ethical role model by raising questions about issues of ethics and societal impacts in meaningful ways. Questions to ask include, how would this development affect the environment? Will this finding create potential safety concerns? Your workplace might not have all the answers to questions asked, however, simply asking ethical questions helps build a more ethics-focused work environment. At the societal level, we are responsible for understanding the social world that hosts and sustains our work. For example, consider the societal impact of microbead consumption. Microbeads are millimeter-sized plastic beads found in many personal care products such as facial scrubs, shampoo, and even toothpaste. Microbeads have a tendency to absorb toxic materials such as dioxins, and since they do not dissolve when they make their way into our water supply, the potential impact on public health is concerning. Next, we will watch a video that focuses on how neuroscientists and ethicists are having meaningful conversations about emerging technologies and their potential impact. When we implant electrodes into brains for therapeutic reasons, all of a sudden we may be stimulating regions of a brain, and that means we're controlling regions of the brain. That raises some ethical concerns. If I can just parse this a little bit, so let me just say what neuroengineering is. It's really the confluence of three domains. It's the confluence of neuroscience, device technology, and computing. Those three together form this sort of special neuroengineering domain. With that come some ethical issues. And in the sciences, we're going to benefit from a partnership uh, with ethicists and philosophers. So scientists are trained to do science. 
and it's not as if they can't talk about values questions. I find generally they're very interested, but they don't feel trained to talk about it. So when we talked to the scientists and engineers in the center, they thought it was really important to do something about these issues, but they didn't feel prepared to do it themselves. There have been questions about, or interest anyway, in doing deep brain stimulators for depression. But now let's say, it's on a closed loop, so anytime your levels, neurotransmitter levels or electrical activity levels, go down below a certain level, it automatically boosts you back up. That might be good, but on the other hand, something bad could happen in your life. Your mother dies. Of course you should feel poorly. <laughs> you would expect that. But then if your levels go down and your machine automatically boosts you back up, right? what would the internal feeling be like? Just having the graduate students and Sarah present in our space and asking us questions raises our consciousness, our neural systems, to be thinking a little more about the ethical implications of what we do. I do a lot of work in disability studies as well, another interdisciplinary program on campus. And one of the worries from disability studies is we have a lot of investment in these technologies that are intended to help people with disabilities. But some people with disabilities may not actually want the benefit that's intended for them, or they may not see it as a benefit. In some centers for neural engineering, they're working on exoskeletons that would allow a person who would otherwise be using a wheelchair to stand up and move, right, with this sort of robotic uh, structure around their legs. But some people with disabilities would say, I'm not really interested in standing up. I'm fine using a wheelchair, right? If there's a problem, it's that not enough places are accessible and we need to work on that. Uh, Sarah gives a really fantastic lecture on what um, the area of philosophy can do and cannot do. And it's actually interesting what it doesn't do. It doesn't apply rules. It's not law. It's not legal judgment. It doesn't uh, issue a right and wrong. It issues a question of not what could be done, but what should be done. And that could, should thinking is pretty um, uh, unique to philosophy and it's something that science should embrace more and more. This video suggests that through active exploration of ethical doubt, we can become aware of the potential social and ethical impacts of our work. At the environmental level, we are responsible for understanding the environmental world that hosts and sustains the work we do. This includes thinking about flora, fauna, air, and water. For example, in Waco, Texas, an ammonium nitrate explosion occurred at the West Fertilizer company storage facility and it had tremendous long-term impact on the community and the environment. Ethical questions one should ask include, what happens to particles that become airborne? How will the release of these particles impact plant and animal life? Let's pause for a discussion question. What are the four levels of ethical consideration? The four levels of ethical consideration are individual, workplace, societal, and environmental. Consideration of these four levels of nanoethics will help us begin integrating ethics meaningfully into our research. We will now discuss ways we can develop conversations about the social and ethical implications of our work. To stay informed about social and ethical information, Search Google and Google Scholar using terms such as nanoethics, ethics of nanotechnology, or ethics of technology. Stay up to date with the evolving National Nanotechnology Coordinated Infrastructure website. And attend conferences or forums that discuss SEI. For example, Arizona State University hosts an annual conference on Emerging Technologies, Law, Policy, and Ethics. Ways to integrate social and ethical implications into our work include partner with ethicists and philosophers to have them speak in your workplace or lead workshops, locate or develop case studies or workshop simulations that can stimulate critical discussion of SEI, 
research potential ethical or social issues that may stem from your work, and work as a group to conceptualize ways to reduce those issues. Be proactive and include an SEI component of some kind within each research plan or proposal, and establish an SEI research code for your laboratory. Ultimately, this module serves as a starting point for discussing societal and ethical implications, just as researchers have begun doing in neuroscience and other fields. As you think about what we've discussed today, particularly the social and ethical implications of the work that you do, we hope you will remember the words of Dr. Prasad. This process of knowing is usually one of experimentation and reflection, marked by things like missteps, doubt, correction, and a sense of fulfillment. For additional information or questions about this module, please contact Dr. Leanne Kaler, whose information is listed here.